Live from downtown Detroit, Local 4 News at 6 starts now. Weather topping the news here tonight at 6. A washout across Metro Detroit after another round of nasty winter weather. Good to have you with us tonight. I'm Devin Skillion. I'm Kimberly Gill. Let's get right over to forewarned meteorologist Kim Adams with a look at where things stand right now, Kim. Well, things are improving, Kimberly, tonight. We've got the freezing rain changing over to rain, and it's actually starting to move out at this hour as well. But we still have some pockets of fairly heavy rainfall, so Exact Track 40 radar doing a little street level mapping for you right along I-94 in downtown Detroit, getting a pretty decent downpour at this hour. Rockwood, Monroe, LaSalle, also over to Dundee, getting some fairly heavy rain, but as we move a little bit farther to the north, we're watching a little freezing rain come down in Waterford over to Oxford and just touching the western part of Romeo. We still have a winter weather advisory in effect for those of you that are in St. Clair County. That includes Port Huron until 8 o'clock tonight. The rest of Metro Detroit, that winter weather advisory was allowed to expire at 4 o'clock as this precip comes to an end. Keeping a close eye on temps, they are at or near freezing just about everywhere you go. But it's the wind we're concerned about because even though the roads are just wet, there's a lot of ice on the trees and we've had winds in excess of 30 to 35 miles per hour adding to the power outages. If you want to keep up to date on all the latest weather information, the best way to do it is to download our forewarn weather app and type in your city. You'll get interactive radar right in the palm of your hand and accurate forecasts for your neighborhood. Okay, Kim, thank you. And as we've been saying, thousands of DTE customers remain without yeah. power for a fifth day now. At last check here at 6 DTE reporting more than 62,000 customers still in the dark. Uh, more than 600,000 customers have had their power restored, but more than 10,000 customers lost their power today due to the weather. Two steps forward, one step back. Meantime, the company is offering a $35 credit to any customers who were without power for more than 96 hours. One of uh, the largest operations I've seen in my 20 year uh, career with the company, just very proud overall with what uh, what the resources have been able to do, what all of our employees and our contractors and partners have been able to help get restored so far. Uh, again, we know this is a real challenge uh, for anybody who's been out of power this long, uh, and we're going to continue working until the last customer is restored. In fact, tonight, frustrated DTE customers are demanding answers as they spend another night in the dark. Power outages also getting the attention of state lawmakers. Consumer investigator Hank Winchester working all day to get results for you. He joins us now with what he's learned. Hank. Hey, listen, Kimberly, and I get that frustration. My power went out Wednesday. It just thankfully popped on a few hours ago. Let me get you to the good news. The good news saying, a DTE saying that 95% of customers now back online this evening. The bad news is you can probably see it. Some of this freezing rain and drizzle that's starting to come down, that is certainly not gonna help the crews that are out there right now working to restore power all over the area been really hard because you know it's been like a struggle with the foods. Parrish, Shannon and their baby, they're cold, tired and frustrated like many of you. You can't stay here with the baby. Yeah. No. Yeah. Um I just go over to my house until the lights get back on. The power has been on and off, but mainly off in their east side apartment since last Thursday. All we can do is just wait and be patient. Like thousands of you, my own power went out on Wednesday night. We're at 48 right now. I'm not going to lie, that was kind of a cold night. The house was frigid. The fridge now almost empty. I pitched all the food last night. Thankfully, I got back online this afternoon, and DTE says now 95% of customers affected by the storm now have power. Meantime, Michigan lawmakers demanding action. Michigan Attorney General Dana Nessel pushing for automatic financial credits and more change, saying despite asking for record increases time and time again, our utilities have failed to adequately invest in their own infrastructure. Our current service quality standards are not sufficient, and it is incumbent on the utilities to right this wrong. The Attorney General, though, saying that she is encouraging DTE to make that move to make credits automatic. Is that something that you're agreeing with and working towards? We're doing that for this storm, that's right. But for the next storm? Uh, that's a process we're going to continue to work with through, uh, through our regulatory channels. And state rep Abraham Ayash of Hamtramck pushing for legislation that would force utilities to pay you more for disruptions in service. Pay back the customers. 
pay them back for the groceries, pay them back for the outages, pay them back for the lost medication, and pay them back for the outage time that they've had to experience. So in regards to this particular storm, you don't have to go on and file the paperwork for that claim. But as you heard, DTE a little vague there uh, moving towards the future, how they're going to handle those paybacks. The AG insistent. She feels that they should be automatic. Back out here in Hamtramck, the good news, you can see the power now on. There were many homes in this area uh, that struggled with outages during the last few days. And today, uh, the power now on for many in this community, but I know many of you still struggling. Stay on DTE and stay in touch with us directly if we can help in any way. We're live here tonight at Hamtramck. Hank Winchester, help me, Hank. Back to you. So absolutely frustrating though. Okay, Hank, we appreciate it. And the power outages are hitting some of our most vulnerable people, of course, seniors living in assisted living facilities. Tonight, Victor Williams live hearing from families who hope that their seniors get priority repairs, but they're still waiting days later, Victor. Yes, that is correct, Devin. They are still waiting, and we spoke to the husband of one woman who is unfortunately suffering from terminal brain cancer, and unfortunately at the facility where she is, there's no power. This man is hoping that everything can be restored sooner rather than later. She's in bad health to begin with, but this is not helping, that's for sure. 73-year-old Cindy Condon has been living here at Kernway Assisted Living Facility in Bloomfield Hills with no power since about Wednesday night. Her husband Vince has been advocating for DTE to do something ever since. DTE supposedly is prioritizing nursing homes and uh, assisted living facilities, but my wife has been without power now for five days. This is the fifth day. There are people in their 90s living there. Everybody has a health problem who lives there. Vince says he's called DTE on multiple occasions, but unfortunately has had no luck with seeing any results. He worries the longer his wife is in the dark, the harder it will be for her to live. You have to worry about their, their state of mind, their depression. A lot of times people like this, they depend on watching TV. Well, there's no TV to watch, so they have very little to do in the evening. They don't sleep right, um, so I'm really concerned about her health. With no definite answer on when power will be restored and more wintry weather on the way, concerns are high. But there are extension cords in the facility so people can trip on them. It's hard for the wheelchairs to maneuver around the wires. Uh, there's no hot water. Lastly, he wants DTE to have a closer look at all the senior facilities operating without power. I'd like DTE to have a list of all of the care facilities that are licensed in the state of Michigan and use that as a priority. And here's some good news. After we made a phone call to DTE, we're told that crews were rerouted in order to try and get power back onto this facility. We're told that hopefully it's back to normal by the end of the day. Victor Williams, Local 4. I'll use the word again. So frustrating for so many people. All right, Victor. Debilitating even. Yeah. An unusual request from officials in one metro Detroit community. They're asking residents to cover their toilets. Priya Mann joins us live from Hazel Park with why they're being asked to do that. Priya. Well, Kim, contractors are doing preventative work here on the sanitary sewer pipes, and that could end up impacting your bathroom. So city officials handed out notices like this to about 150 homes. While we were working on the story today, I was tweeting back and forth with Mayor Pro Tem of Hazel Park, Luke Londo, and he tweeted, of course, the whole asking residents to saran wrap their toilets always gets an interesting reaction. Homeowners were certainly puzzled. I'll just give the toilet seat down, I guess. It's not every day you get a notice asking you to close your toilet lid or cover your toilet with garbage bags or plastic wrap. Have you ever heard a request to, hey, cover your toilet? No, I haven't. The city of Hazel Park's Department of Public Works is launching a pilot program inspecting sanitary sewer pipes in the rear area of homes. While this request is rare, it's not unheard of. There is a little notice on there about uh, toilets because a toilet bowl does hold water. And when our when these uh, jet equipments or these sewer equipments are used, they can create different levels of pressures. Contractors are looking for deficiencies in damaged pipes. We went old school for a breakdown of the process. So we have a main sewer line that is owned by the city and it runs underground and then each home has their home sewer line connected to it. So what we're doing is we're going to clean this sewer line out and then run a camera through it 
to look around and to check the inside of the pipe condition to know if it's doing well or not. But the challenge is the pressure that could be in here could mm -hmm. lead yeah, to some it could, issues like in your Yeah, because if I get a little suction going on, it might pull the air through the line and then you'll get that little toilet splash. DPW has divvied up the city into a dozen sections. The first includes about 150 homes west from I-75 to the city border from Woodward Heights to 10 Mile. They're just looking out for our best interest, I guess. Of course, we had to end right with the sound of a toilet flushing. Uh, the city is focusing on this area first. We're in the northwest area of Hazel Park. The process costs about 50 to 100 grand. It really depends on what contractors find. Officials are going to take a pause after this first week. They're expecting it'll take about a week for the results to come in, and then they will decide how to continue in the following 11 sections. And of course, we will keep you posted. Reporting live in Hazel Park, I'm Priya Mann. Local four. I appreciate that sketch too that he did because it yeah. really shows you exactly, you know, what's going on and what could happen. Priya, we appreciate your report. This I evening. thought so too. Yeah. It was really good. Yeah, Thanks. appreciate it. The EPA has halted all shipments of toxic waste from the East Palestine train derailment. It will put an end to the massive shipments of contaminated soil that have been treated in Michigan. Uh, local officials raised alarm back on Friday, saying they had no notice that waste was being brought here. Wayne County Commissioner Ray Basham says uh, that the waste that is put under groundwater to treat it could spread to other places. And it moves. And, it, and, and so it, it not only stays in Romulus, it goes all over to Taylor, it goes over to Westland, it goes to, you know, it, who knows where it goes. Five shipments were headed to Michigan. They were ordered to turn around. As it stands, though, there are more than 100,000 gallons of waste that need to be removed from the derailment site. Fire and police departments are looking into a suspected arson in Green Oak Township. Fire started Friday morning about 2. Police believe there's a connection between the homeowner and the potential arsonist. Police say the suspect, who is currently at the Livingston County Jail, is involved in another possible arson in Oakland County. The investigation continues.